Pete, or Kench1913, along with... Dad. And today, we're going to be making what? Meatloaf. Our style meatloaf. Uh, the ingredient for this meatloaf is, uh, we got over here, uh, ground, ground beef chuck. Two eggs, and, and medium onion. Mm -hmm. Get it Romano cheese. We got parsley. Parsley. Bread crumb mm -hmm. and uh, salt and pepper, right? Salt, yeah, salt. Uh, just ground pepper. And uh, we're gonna have a pepper. Oh, uh, we don't use too much salt over here. Yeah, because there is salt in, in the cheese. So let's start. All right. So we got how much uh, ground beef is oh, this? That's about around two and a half pounds. <clears throat> now you could use a. Uh, you could. Uh, you get the, you can use it di different things. The different. A lot of people, a lot of people, they make only three kind of meat. Yeah, they, they, they have... mix, they mix beef, pork, and uh, veal. Uh, yeah, it's called the meatloaf pack, I believe and, it's called, uh, and it's like the, they put the. A lot of people together. they put different, different, uh, different in ingredient in it. Yeah. Like uh, some they put even. I've green seen pepper. Yeah, I've seen people. Very small. Yeah, I've seen people put salsa and stuff in and and meatloaf. Yeah. yeah um, meatloaf. really, meatloaf. This is our version of it. You can kind of do it any which way you want. Uh, you know, meatloaf was was kind of invented back in the Great Depression when they were trying to make um, you know meat last lo longer, so they would make a loaf out of it. So. Uh, yeah. So what's next? Well, we're gonna put the eggs in it. Yeah, so we got the meat, you wanna break it up and uh yeah. Get the eggs. You wanna at least do uh depending on how much depending on uh, how much probably for this and we uh the eggs they're eggs. not they're not that they're not big. They're not big, probably gonna use another one. Hmm. We're gonna use three eggs. Yeah, because our eggs are gonna be our binder. And this is what's gonna bind the uh, meat the meat together as we put everything everything in order. You know, we're gonna have cheese. It's kind of like a, almost sort of like a meatball, but we don't use garlic. That's kind of. Instead of the garlic, we use the onion. Yeah, and and one thing you want to make sure to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So now you got now you got the eggs. Do we gotta season it? Uh, well, well red crumb. Yeah. And now, uh, I'll probably put in the video description how much we're using. My dad's doing well, it by probably. half cup, maybe. Cup, cup. Cup and a half, maybe. Cup and a half. Now, as you can see, we're using the uh, season style breadcrumbs, which already have some parsley in it already. But if you're just, you could also use panko if you wanted to. You could use, uh, <clears throat> like any other kind, like uh, sometimes they have. Spicy, uh, spicy breadcrumbs. Now we want to use uh, Romano cheese, pecorino Romano. And don't worry if it's clumpy, because you're gonna when you mix it up all together, it's gonna. Uh, be... Try to get it less clump. Yeah. Mm. So this recipe is more, I think, mom's recipe that she found that she used to do because I think her grandmother used to do this one more than uh, like a mom or something. Yeah, if, if you go in the store they sell a, they sell a meatloaf mix. Yeah. That's a that's a very like the beef, just the beef itself. The, the, the seasoning mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. no and uh, now you wanna put some parsley in there. Yeah a little more parsley. Extra parsley. Even though you did the uh that there is possibly with the with the bread crumb you want to put it extra. Oh, a lot of lot of lot of people they use even a instead of bread crumb they use a, a, a regular a regular Italian bread. Yeah. They hold two days old. They put them in water. They they soak them in water and then then they squeeze they out squeeze the moisture. Them, squeeze yeah, out yeah, the yeah. moisture and, uh, and then you gotta put some pepper and then the last thing we're gonna put in is our onion. I'd say that's probably uh, <clears throat> parsley. I'm not sure how much that is. Probably the well, tablespoon. Uh, probably more than two tablespoons. After 
if you use the if you use the seasoned bread crumb then you put another tablespoon yeah. of pasta uh, pasta you know, otherwise now, now you, you use a couple of tablespoons. The nice thing about uh, meatloaf is it is very versatile. You, you know, obviously we're doing our own uh, our own style. Uh, you can do whatever the heck you want. This is just kind of like it's really more of a uh, a blueprint than anything. I mean, you don't have to add like certain things and and uh, I don't know. It's just like a blueprint. Like I know people who put who when they, when they put it in the oven, it's about halfway cooked they throw in um, they throw on top uh, ketchup to give it a nice glaze at the top uh, there's also you can wrap it in bacon which I hear is very good I've never done it but I've always wanted to try it so my dad is gonna cut this onion up into, uh, into nice into a nice uh, <clears throat> nice tiny pieces if you want a little a, you know you could use the food processor and really crunch up the onions because when my brother, <clears throat> when we used to eat meatloaf back in the day, my brother uh, still lived in our house. He used to always bitch that there was uh, too many onions in it. He didn't like it, so we always had to um, we always had to make sure that the onions were finely chopped. But now that he's not in the house anymore, we don't have to worry about that too much. So one other thing, while you're waiting, or if, if before you start mixing the meat over here. You might want to uh, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So my dad's just going to chop up the onion. Uh, I lied. We're going to cut up the onion so we can show you, you know, how you want to do it. You can do it finer. We're just going to do like a coarse chop here. And yeah, it's going to be good. Now you want to make sure you have a fairly sharp blade. Also, want to make sure that you're careful when you're cutting it up because uh, you don't want to cut your fingers. Um, I know if you have a dull blade, that really helps with getting the onion all, all kinds of uh, all kinds of messy with your eyes, you know what I mean? You could add other other things in here, like, like uh, you can add like red pepper, paprika, really anything that you want. Like my friend, uh, they add salsa to theirs. Uh, I know, uh, what else? There's all different kinds, you know, veal and, and pork. And... So yeah, my dad's gonna finish cutting up the onion. Oh, we'll, throw, the... we'll throw it in there and then for we'll... The, uh... For the one that they, they can make with chicken. Oh yeah, you could, yeah, if you don't want to use beef, you could totally use chicken, oh, good. turkey. I've never tried turkey, but I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't, very, if it's, if it isn't uh, bad. Because uh, chick I know chick I like chicken burgers. And I like turkey I like turkey uh, meatballs and this is similar to a meatball. There's also another recipe that we're gonna show that's very similar to this meatloaf recipe. They're called mini meatloafs, and what ends up happening is you, you make it with the meatloaf mix like this, and then you would make them tiny, obviously, like little like little footballs, and then you would uh, fry those up, and then at the end, with all the drippings in the pan, you would uh, you would actually um, <clears throat> you'd put in some uh, beef stock and make gravy taste like Salisbury steak. It's awesome. But I wanted to show this uh, recipe off first, so that you could be like, oh, okay, because if we say, oh, refer back to the meatloaf recipe, you know, then you could always do that. But this is going to be our big meatloaf versus our mini meatloaf. Alright, so what we're doing here is we're going to put some breadcrumbs in a, I believe a 13 by 9 pan. Because we preheated our oven to 350 degrees. And we're just going to put uh, breadcrumbs on the bottom here of our pan so that it does not stick when we put the meat on. It won't stick to the bottom. And you want to do this before you start melding the meat together so that um, you, you don't get dirty hands when you're doing it. So coat the uh, bottom of the pan fairly even, and now let us, now my dad is going to mix the meat. And if you uh, find that your mixture 
is a little too dry. Like, how would you know, Dad? Oh, you can see it. Yeah, if your mixture is a little good. too dry, you could always add some water. Because, because the egg won't bind everything together. So, that's how you'd know. Like, I guess you could add another egg if you really wanted to. But, well, the better... I don't want to put too much eggs. The, yeah. the, the safer bet is to, uh... Is to use water. So yeah, you just kind of want to incorporate everything together. You probably need more water. Well, really, I guess it really all depends on what, how much meat you're making. This will probably feed uh, six people, six, uh, maybe even eight people. Any more water? Yes. You just want to mix until everything gets incorporated. What kind of what kind of feeling should you have here with the fingers? Oh, you know? that's a, like when you uh, making a meatball that's nice yeah. and soft. That's not yeah. too dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think this is my great grandmother's recipe, if I'm not mistaken. How she used to make meatloaf back in the day. So yeah, after um, mixing it together, this is probably the part obviously where you're going to get your hands dirty. Unless you use gloves. Mm, that's not good. That's good. Or whatever. So what we're going to do is put this if you're making a very big meatloaf, yeah. you, can do, you can make them in the you can mixer. Yeah. You know, a big mixer. Uh -huh. Like at the kitchen. Yeah, mixer. and if you feel like you're, you, you know, you don't think your meatloaf will fit in a pan like this, you can always well, make two you, smaller ones. Get yeah, a smaller one yeah. if you got a, uh, if you got a bigger So pan. now, how long do you think this is going to have to cook for? You got two. Uh, uh, you got to figure 20, 25 minutes a pound. Yeah. We got two and a half pounds, about an hour and a half. Yeah. Maybe an hour and a half. So now you just gotta kind of make it into a loaf here. Into a, like a football. And yeah. You just gotta kind of... Yeah, because what's gonna end up happening is the, the outside is gonna get nice and crunchy. While the inside is gonna stay nice and moist. And usually we do eat this with ketchup, I won't lie. Delicious with ketchup. So now, what do we do? We usually put a little bit of water. Yeah, this way it don't this way it don't dry out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Some more. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we we do that so that it don't dry out. And now the oven's already preheated at a three at 350 degrees. So we'll just uh, throw it in there, cook it for about an hour and a half. And then we'll come back and we'll show you the uh, finished product. Alright, we got our meatloaf here. It's been cooking for about two hours. And, uh, yeah. Now what you want to do let it stand is let the meatloaf rest. That's what you want to do. And uh, what we'll do is we'll plate it up. We'll cut ourselves a piece and then we'll try it. All right, so look at our meatloaf here. Doesn't it look yum? We took it out of the oven. We let it sit for a few minutes. And uh, yeah, we're ready to roll. Sometimes I like to use ketchup with this. I got a couple of corrections I want to make. One, the pan is 11 by 7, not 13 by 9. And two, I found out it's my grandmother who loved meatloaf, not my great-grandmother. All right, she came up with this recipe. All right, so let's dig in. As you can see, it's nice and soft. They're nice and uh, moist. It tastes good. It's got the onion flavor. You got the nice crunchy shell from the outside. It's Delicious. very good. It's very good. So this has been uh, another Cooking with Kench 1913. And if you want to own your own Cooking with Kench 1913 apron, Go to sd.com backslash Kenshin1913. I'll have the link in the video description below. So this has been Pete, or Kenshin1913, along with... Dad. And this has been another Cooking with Kenshin1913.
Buon appetito.